Hi guys, I thought I'd go over the answers to your questions from the other day. Um, you had those triangle pyramid things. Uh, as long as you have the definition in an example, that'd be all right. A uh, unicellular organism is a single-celled organism. An example could be bacteria or an archaea. A uh, multicellular organism is an organism with many cells, such as us or plants. An adaptation is anything that helps an organism survive. Uh, so that would be like our thumbs, the long neck of a giraffe. Vestigial structure is a structure that is reduced and unused from an ancestor. The human tailbone, the whale's hind legs, snake's legs, or your appendix would be a good example of that. Which is not a part of the fossil record? It has to be living unicellular organisms are not a part of the fossil record because they have to be dead. Um, whether a fossil formed before or after another fossil is described by its A relative age. The earliest multicellular organisms were B simple plants. Which is a possible explanation for mass extinction. The meteorite was the one for B. Darwin's theory that species develop new traits over time is A, natural selection, which describes Lamarck's explanation for changes in the fossil record. C, acquired traits are passed on from one generation to another. He was the one that said that they stretch their necks and they pass that on. Uh, a slight change in a rabbit's ability to hear its predators better and help it survive is an adaptation A, which is necessary for speciation to occur. That is C, isolation. That's one of Darwin's premises. Which of the following statements explain why the theory of evolution is widely accepted by the scientific community? It is supported by genetic evidence C. Genetic evidence is based on the study of D, DNA sequences. Genetic information that cells use to control the production of new cells is located in the B genes. How are relative age of a fossil determined? Well, the deeper the layer of rock in which the fossil is found, the older the fossil. Explain the difference between artificial selection and natural selection. Artificial selection is selective breeding, where the humans have picked the traits. In natural selection, over a long period of time, traits become adaptations because they allow you to better reproduce and survive. How does common ancestry between two species support evolution? The more related the organisms are, the more similarities they will have, and the more closely related the common ancestors are. Um, communicate. What have scientists learned about the past life on Earth from the fossil record? We learned a lot about different species that aren't here anymore and uh, ancestors of ones that actually are still here. We've also learned about many of the different mass extinctions. Explain the principle of overproduction. Overproduction is like with mice and rabbits and tadpoles. They produce many, many, many babies knowing that most of them are going to die and not survive and only the strongest will survive. How might the mass extinction of the dinosaurs ex enable many new species of mammals to develop? When the dinosaurs were gone, the mammals evolved very, very quickly through a process called adaptive radiation and that allowed mammals to fill the niches that the dinosaurs left vacant. Kind of like when there's a bunch of jobs, people move in to take those jobs. How are variation and adaptation related to natural selection? Variations are tiny changes. Sometimes those tiny changes are beneficial and can lead to adaptations. In Africa's Lake Tanganyika, different populations of cichlids became isolated from each other. Based on what you already learned, predict how changing water helped to cichlid population to change, how do you think the development of a new cichlid species affected the living things in the lake? Well, every time they became isolated, new species evolved through reproductive isolation. Um, when you get new species, you help the biodiversity of the lake.
How is geographic isolation related to the information of new species, the formation of new species? Without geographic isolation, speciation cannot occur because they will keep interbreeding and be just one species. Pandas were once considered to be closely related to raccoons and red pandas because of their physical similarities. Today, scientists have learned that pandas are more closely related to bears than red pandas. What evidence might scientists use to draw this conclusion? Well, they did DNA sequencing and they know that raccoons and red pandas are related, while bears and regular pandas are related. What does the presence of similar features in two organisms, such as a dolphin's flipper and a lizard's forelimb, indicate? Those are homologous structures, and they indicate a common ancestor. So now you have to use this cladogram. Hyenas are most closely related to which group? And that's A, cats. Weasels, otter, otters, and ferrets are most closely related to C, raccoons and kinkajous. Sea lions and fur seals share their closest common ancestor with walruses and earless seals. Which statement is true based on this Diagram, and that's B. Raccoons are more closely related to weasels than they are to giant pandas. The branches in the diagram indicate where B, speciation, took place. All right, guys. Hopefully you guys did well. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon.